on the personal grounds, OSHA requires in their regulations that you also use the F855-20 just came out and you also use the IEEE 1048. So I recommend for any of you all that are safety that you guys get these for, to have in your hand to be able to read these and go over them from time to time. Also recommend linemen that you also read these from time to time. There's some really good stuff in here. It's hard to understand, at least for me, so to read these things, but if you read them a little bit here and there, it starts making a little bit of sense, all right? But OSHA, OSHA's regs say that these are part of the OSHA regulations as far as your temporary personal grounds. It's important, your temporary personal grounds, that you visually inspect them. It's important that you look that your temporary personal grounds do not have um, any corrosion, any uh, patina on the copper, or your copper is not blackened. It's important that your connections are all tight, your crimps are good, and uh, all those connections don't have any oxidization on them as well. As long as they look good, you don't see any frayed cabling um, in your in your assembly, they typically do really well on this test. There's two ways that you can test grounds. One is with the ohms meter, glorified ohms meter with just a little bit of current, you can actually test your personal grounds. The other way, preferred way, is with continual uh, current. So the uh, ASTM, when, you, when these components come out, they're supposed to be tested with continuous current current and that's on table one basically on page one table one you'll see that how we do how we do our testing is we continue that so in other words our grounds tester is the only grounds tester that uses that current that ASTM requires at the beginning of the assembly ours is the only one that uses the true ASTM continuous current on the assembly after the fact the other, the other manufacturers do not. So this is actually a true continuous current test as per table one in ASTM F855. It's pretty cool. It, this here puts up to 600 amps. If you guys wanna gather around, we'll do it real quick. We got a, we got a, a current meter right here at the bottom. It says current meter. And we have a voltage drop meter right here. And we have four foot, two out cable. The ASTM table one standard right here. In fact, it's right here, right here. It says that you've got to put 300 amps on that. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna just dial up the Variac. We're gonna take, we'll go up to 300 amps. We'll go a little over, because we're in Georgia. And I think you guys are mostly a red state right now. Hmm. So we'll see. Um, we got about 300 amps. And then we've got a point Two, a 0.21, 0 0.20 voltage drop. <laughs> so this actually passes. You look up here at the voltage drop. If you've got a, here we'll dial it back up just a little. If you've got a 0.24 voltage drop or less, it passes. This grounds pass, okay? If it didn't pass, just barely, I would say the first thing it was would be right here. There's hardly any voltage, so the shock potential is not there but it's, there's a little bit of warmth at these connections. These connections are not brushed or clean. Make sure when you're using your temporary personal grounds that those connections are clean. They need to be clean, they'll work better. From coast to coast, I've had the utilities that do not test their personal grounds. There's actually utilities to this day that do not test their personal grounds ever. And the ones that I've been to in the past, when I, they pull off their temporary personal grounds off the truck, I can visually inspect, they weren't visually inspecting, but you're supposed to, all right? I can visually inspect, I see broken strands, I see, I see oxidization, I see broken, uh, I see uh, the clamps and the connections all dirty. And I tell them they're not gonna pass. Put it on here and sure enough, you turn up that continuous current and the thing drops on its face. And when that drops on its face, those temporary personal grounds, if they got hit by a fault current, they would not have protected the worker. That's crazy. The uh, utilities that did not, and I can say did, not test their personal grounds prior to my arrival, a lot of their grounds flat failed, a lot. When I leave, they get the tool, they start testing, 
and they and they are testing their personal grounds on a regular basis to this day and that's a good thing all right there's still some utilities that do not test their personal grounds you should be testing yearly 18 months at the very longest 24 months they need to be date stamped and that date stamp has to comply with what you have in your in your utility in your group as far as when they're to be date stamped whether it's once a year and if you see that date stamp maybe you got called out on a call and you missed the inspection you missed the test and you got called out and you look at your date stamp and it's past due you need to say something to the boss okay get another pair that's been tested make sense you guys got to stay safe this is really important okay all right guys